Hello everyone, welcome to Throttle Only. My name is Nate, this is a Dodge SRT Hellcat Widebody. Let's check it out. So let's go ahead and start with this key fob. So this is the red key. So this is gonna unlock the full 717 horsepower that this beast has. So on this side here, you're gonna have your standard controls, unlock, lock, you can open the trunk. This also is gonna have the remote start option and of course a panic button. On the back here, this beautiful SRT and then the Hellcat logo. Okay guys, so we are head on straight with this Hellcat here. Let's go ahead and start by talking about this hood. So this hood is gonna be finished off in this super nice satin black color. It's gonna contrast so well with this Tor Red Hellcat color that I have this in today. And there are gonna be three different vents on this hood that just make this thing look super aggressive. As we make our way down, there's not gonna be any logo in the center, but off to the side, there is gonna be this very nice SRT Hellcat badge. As we make our way down, you could kind of say that it's pretty plain. There's a lot of area for air to pass through. There's tons of vents, especially with this nice kind of male slot grill that is in the center there. And there is a ton of dimension that the, this front end has as well. Now, the last few things I wanna mention here, First is gonna be this front splitter. That's just gonna be below all of those vents that we have in the front there. And it is gonna be body colored. It looks very good. It kind of adds to this aggressive look. And speaking about adding to the aggressive look, these giant fender flares on the side, since this is the Hellcat wide body, this thing looks so freaking good. And of course, because of these nice wide fenders right here, this is going to allow it to handle those 305 tires that are all around this vehicle. And then the last thing I wanna mention are these beautiful headlights here. So these headlights are going to be LED. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the vehicle just to show you what these headlights look like. Of course, they are gonna be pretty standard for your Dodge Charger, but when you go ahead and turn on your turn signal or hazards, it will actually replace the daytime running light with a nice amber piece that sits in the center. I think that looks super good. So this angle is probably one of my favorite because you can see how wide this vehicle is and you also get to look at how aggressive that front end looks. So let's talk about these wheels. So these wheels you can of course configure on the Dodge website, but the most important thing are gonna be these tires. If you're gonna have a Hellcat and you're gonna have 717 horsepower or more, depending on what configuration you have, make sure you have really good tires. These are gonna be wrapped in Michelin Pilot Sport 4Ss and they're gonna be 305 in the front and the rear. There's also gonna be slotted disc brakes up here in the front, and you're also gonna have your red calipers that say SRT on them. As we make our way back, there's also gonna be this beautiful Hellcat badge on the side. It is gonna be chrome. I think that looks pretty good as well. It stands out very well. It might look a little bit better in black since we do have kind of a red and a black vibe with this vehicle. And then as we make our way back even further, looking at these mirrors. So these mirrors are gonna have your blind spot monitoring system in them. It will indicate on the mirror itself and they can also defrost as well. These door handles are gonna be the standard door handles you'll see throughout the charger lineup. And it's actually gonna have a button on the very top if you'd like to push that. It has your standard proximity sensing inside of it so you can just walk up to the vehicle and open it. And of course, that is only going to be on the front doors. You won't see it on the back doors. Now, from this angle, you could probably notice this giant body line here that's going to start at the front door there on the driver's side and the passenger side. But this is going to be the same body line that you have throughout the rest of the Charger lineups. But it still looks very good. I don't feel like it's outdated at all. As we come on back, there is going to be a slight side skirt there. It doesn't really poke out too much, but if you open the doors, it will show you that you're not supposed to step on it. And then the last thing I wanna mention about this rear here is this fuel door. You're gonna to need to know where this is at because you're gonna be at the pump a lot because fuel economy is absolutely atrocious. Now that we're at the rear, let's start with the roof. So on top, you're gonna to have a shark fin antenna. It will be body colored. On top of the trunk, there's going to be a spoiler. That is also gonna be body colored. And honestly, that would look so much better if it was black just to match the hood. You're also gonna have your standard charger tail lamps that you see in a lot of the other Dodge Charger models. They look pretty nice. There is going to be a Dodge logo in the center that's gonna be spelled out, which also looks pretty good. 
It would look a lot better if that was also in black or maybe even red to contrast with the black that's already there. There will be a trunk button that's gonna be inside of those tail lamps as well. And you can push that to open the trunk. There's gonna be one of the three ways that you can get access to the trunk. Now, just above our little light bar there, there will be a reverse camera that will be exposed. And then just below our light bar, you're gonna have those two badges. On the right side, there's going to be the SRT Hellcat badge. And then on the other side, there'll be just the standard charger badge. And they look pretty nice as well. Again, it would look so much better if they were also in black. Now, the last few things I wanna mention about the rear styling here. So there are gonna be functional side vents behind the rear wheels. There's also gonna be parking sensors. There'll be dual exhaust tips back here as well. And then lastly, there is gonna be a plastic diffuser that looks okay. It could look a lot better, but of course there are aftermarket options. Okay, so now let's go ahead and officially go over some of these vehicle specs. So this is a 2021 Dodge Charger SRT Hellcat widebody. I'm just gonna show you the website real quick. So these are not gonna be made very much longer, but I'll show you what is available here on the website. These of course are gonna be the 2024 models and that pricing as well. So the starting MSRP for a 2024 equivalent to this model year will cost you starting 85,765 US dollars. The engine is gonna have a 6.2 liter supercharged V8 with a 2.4 liter supercharger. It's gonna push out 717 horsepower, 650 foot pounds of torque, and it produces 11.6 pounds of boost. It's also gonna have an automatic transmission with paddle shifters, and it's going to be rear wheel drive. Okay, so now let's go ahead and listen to this exhaust. I'm gonna actually remote start it with the key here, and then after that, let's go ahead and look at the engine bay here. Okay, so I have the hood popped. So there are a few things I wanna point out first off here. On the very top, it's gonna to say SRT and it's gonna have a Hellcat logo there. It's also gonna say SRT down here. And then in the very front, it's gonna say Charger. And then on the actual engine here, you're gonna have SRT and then a Hellcat badge right there. This engine looks so beautiful. Just look at this thing. Oh my goodness. And then on the side there, it's gonna say supercharged Hemi. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at where this engine sits here in relation to these front wheels. There it is, beautiful. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the trunk space here on this thing. So there are gonna be three different ways you can open the trunk. The first of which is gonna be inside. You can just push a button to the left of the steering wheel. You can also just push on the button in the back of the vehicle right here. And then you can also just use the key fob. I'm gonna go ahead and just use the key fob. Push twice to open. So I've left all of my camera gear in here just to show you how much room there is. And there is just a ton. You can see there are the cleaning supplies by Chemical Guys and just all of my camera equipment. It is a very, very large trunk. And then these seats can also be folded down. You can't do it from the rear here, but you can do it. And then you're also gonna have a hook on this side as well that can pop on out. So now let me just clear out the trunk here and I'll show you how much room there is. Okay, now the trunk is cleared and you can see how much room there is. And then actually under here, there's that small tab. If you pull this tab here, there's actually a little bit more storage here. Your battery is gonna be on the right side here. And then there's also going to be a pump to pump up some tires. So now let me show you what the room is like back here with these rear seats folded down. So in order to fold the seats down, there's gonna be these small tabs up here. Go ahead and loop and pull. There's one seat down. And to get the seats down on this side, you'll have to do the same thing. There is a small tab just like on the other side. Go ahead and pull from there. And then both of the rear seats are down. 
And so this is what it's gonna look like with both the seats down and the trunk cleared. You can see there's a decent amount of room here, but you are gonna have a pretty deep loading floor right there. All right, y'all, so I am inside the back seats here of this Hellcat, and it is super comfortable. These seats are honestly like lazy boys. It's like sitting on a giant bench seat. It's super nice. I really do love this nice red leather, super plush. And then as we look at these door handles, I love the contrast between the black and the red. The armrest is going to be black, and then the rest is gonna be kind of like this plasticky material. It is a little bit hard. There is gonna be a speaker that's gonna be on the door, and there's some aluminum accent pieces as well. And then very, very small amount of storage on the door panel, but you do have this storage pocket that's gonna be right in front of you for the driver and the passenger. There is also a decent amount of headroom as well. And then in the very center, you are gonna have your own vents. There will be two USB type A's, and then you can also adjust the heated seats back here as well. So now let's go ahead and move on to the passenger door here. So the windows are not going to be frameless. I really do like these locks that they have. They're very nice and tactile. They have a nice click to them. There is gonna be a small vent that's gonna be just up from here. Nice aluminum handle, an extremely small area for some storage. I'm not sure really what you would put in there, maybe some mints or something. You have your window controls, your lock and your unlock, and then a very nice, comfortable, plush armrest, some nice aluminum trim, and then another very small pocket here for some storage. As we make our way into the vehicle, standard automatic controls here on the side, including some for your lumbar support. The floor mat is gonna say SRT. Up on the dashboard, there's also gonna be a very nice SRT badge that's gonna sit right in front of your passenger so they can look at it. And then a very standard plastic dash for them to also look at. And then as far as the seats in the front here, they are gonna be heated and they'll also be cooled. And then you'll have this beautiful SRT Hellcat logo. On the driver's side here, it's pretty much gonna be same as the passenger door panel. Same beautiful materials here all the way throughout. You're gonna have some memory seat settings here, however. And then as we make our way down, nice speaker, window controls, lock and unlock controls, nice armrest, a small area for some storage and then some more area for some storage down below from there. As we make our way into the vehicle on this side, you'll have an SRT mat, rubber dead pedal on this side. Your parking brake is gonna actually be a lever that's gonna sit right there. There'll be aluminum and rubber pedals here as well. And then same automatic controls that we saw on the passenger side. And then of course, the driver's seat will also be heated and ventilated as well. Now, before we enter the vehicle, here are some of the controls. The controls on the left side will control all of the lights, and you can also control some of the brightness for the interior controls in the center dial, and then your trunk button will be to the right. So inside the vehicle, starting with this armrest and center console, so it is very comfortable to put your arm on. It, look how soft this is. You have a latch right here. If you go ahead and pull that back, you have a bunch of storage down here. There's this little tray here for your coins. You can also just remove this. There's a 12 volt DC adapter down there, two USB type A's, and then there's also going to be an aux cord as well. In front of the armrest and center console, there are two cup holders. There's also going to be this split here. You can put your phone there if you would like, and it is decently sized as well. As we move on up, there's this beautiful type of material here around the shift lever. There's also this small area here. If you would like, you can put your key down there and it's also going to say Dodge Brothers designed in Detroit, pretty cool. And I'll just go ahead and put the red key right in there. Looks pretty nice. This is going to be the shift lever. I just love how this looks. It's very nice to grab. And then it has this very nice blacked out glossy color below where you would put your thumb. It looks super nice. There is also a storage area just behind that shift lever, as well as a 12 volt DC adapter. There are a bunch of hard touch buttons here in the center. There where you find your AC controls, your front and your rear defrosting. And if you want to adjust any of your AC, you'll see right here up top that it adjusts very nicely. And you can just quickly turn that off. Your volume knob and tuning knob is also gonna be up here. 
the volume is going to be on the left and the tuning is going to be on the right. In the center here, there will be a hazard button, SRT button. That is going to bring up your SRT pages like so. There will also be a launch button if you want to launch the vehicle, parking sensors and traction off. You can also mute your audio very quickly as well. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment. On the bottom left here, there will be media, different sources, AM, FM, Sirius XM, and then of course, Bluetooth. The next item here will be climate control, and you can control all of your climate aspects here, your fan speed, your temperature, all of that good stuff. In the next section, there will be some different controls. There will be heated and ventilated seats in this vehicle, as well as a mirror dimmer and heated steering wheel. On the next section here, you have U apps. And there are a bunch of different things. Some of them are going to be overlapped. For example, the driver ventilation, passenger heat, passenger ventilation, that sort of stuff. However, if you do want to quickly go to your SRT modes and dashboard, you can hit that U button in the center and then quickly go to the SRT mode right there. And then from here, you can select which specific mode you'd like to be in. If you're in auto, it is going to automatically put you in eco mode. If I hit custom, this is an individual mode that I've selected and configured for myself. And in sport, everything will be in sport, the power, transmission, paddle shifters, traction, suspension, and steering. And that will be the same thing for track. Now let's go ahead and hit this U apps one more time. And we're gonna go to the dashboard. And on the dashboard, there will also be a good amount of items here as well. If you wanna go back to your drive modes, you can hit that. There's also a shift light if you want that on. You can activate line lock and performance pages as well. These performance pages do take a little bit of time to actually load up, but when they do, it does have a pretty good amount of information in it. And I'll show you what that looks like here as soon as it loads. All right, so now that that has loaded there, you could just see how much stuff is here. So there are specific timers if you wanna activate timers. Just look at all of the information you could potentially use. There's gauges. This will show you your boost pressure. G-force meter. Engine. So if I go ahead and push on the gas here, you can see it actually changes there. And there's also a dyno mode there as well. That is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and we're going to hit home here. And this is also a pretty nice area to just sit at. And then you can add a widget if you would like. If I go ahead and click that, you can add either gauges or timers to whichever you would like. Let's continue on with this infotainment. So let's go ahead and hit navigation. A navigation, pretty straightforward. However, for me, I would probably just use Apple Maps. I don't really care about any of these items on here. You can also hit phone, and then you can add any of your favorite contacts. And then of course, you're gonna have settings, all of the boring items here that every vehicle is essentially going to have, but it's there. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about this steering wheel. So this steering wheel is very chunky. It's gonna have some nice perforations in this leather. It's also gonna have some white contrast stitching in it as well. In the very center, there will be this SRT logo here. This SRT logo is actually gonna light up red at nighttime, and man, that thing looks super aggressive. And then on the left side here, all of these controls are going to actually control this center tack here. I'll show you that in just a second. On the bottom there, there will be some phone controls. And then on the right side, there will be some cruise control options that you can configure there. And on the back of the steering wheel, you will have these paddle shifters here, your minus and your plus on the other side. But they're only going to be on the very top half. And the bottom half, you'll actually use these buttons this toggle area to actually control your media, which I find is very annoying. I do wish that they had full paddle shifters, especially for a vehicle with this much horsepower. Okay, so now let me show you this center tack here. So to control that, you'll just use these dials right here. As they push up, you can see certain things will pop up. Diagnostics, if you hit OK, it'll check for specific codes. Speed warning, if you want to warn yourself when you reach a certain speed, you can go ahead and click whichever speed you would like. I'm gonna go ahead and keep it off. There's a screen set up, so you can also adjust these items up here in the very top row. Stored messages, if you have any. Specific audio, I am connected to Bluetooth. Trip information, fuel economy, performance. It says top speed in this vehicle was 136 miles per hour. 
vehicle information, such as oil pressure, and then you can also toggle to the side oil life, battery voltage, intake air temp, engine torque, engine power, air fuel ratio, and you can just see there's a lot of things here. And then back to the speedometer, I think that this is probably the best view here. This is probably my favorite too, because as you increase speed, it'll actually show you every single number on there, which I have not seen in another vehicle. So that's pretty awesome. Now, the very last thing I wanna show you before we go ahead and take this out for a drive is this reverse camera. You can go ahead and shift into reverse and it'll go ahead and pop on open. And this is a look at the image quality for the reverse camera. All right, y'all, so I'm off here in the Hellcat. I'm starting off in auto mode. I'm just gonna punch it. I'm going about 30 miles per hour. It's really not bad in eco mode. Still super fast. I still just love how these numbers display completely on this thing. The steering is also super nice. It corresponds with whatever specific drive mode you're in. Let's go ahead and put it into track mode. I'm gonna downshift. And I'm gonna do a zero to 60 here. I'm not gonna use the launch button, but I'm just gonna floor it. Oh my God. Holy, holy moly. This is ridiculous. That's already 90 miles per hour. The shifts are so quick in track mode. Oh my God. This thing is an absolute beast. I'm probably averaging like five miles to the gallon right now, but I don't even care. This is so crazy. All right, so let's try a custom mode here where mostly everything is gonna be in street mode, but it does give me the 717 horsepower. Let's do it from 20 miles per hour. Oh, still spinning. Oh my God. <laughs> This thing is so much fun. Now I get it. Smiles per miles, for sure. Ho, 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 ho. So cornering definitely is not a strong suit in this, especially because this thing is absolutely massive, but it also is putting all 717 horsepower to the rear wheels. Oh my. <laughs> that supercharger wine just sounds so good. And so this glass up here is actually going to be dual pane. So it would actually sound even better from the interior if it was only single pane, but it still sounds super good. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this Hellcat wide body review. If you did consider subscribing, consider liking the video. It would really mean a lot to me. Thank you so much. Peace. <laughs>